No, Celeste is around. Belly, you lied. You can see here that energy is rationed out per district. We are also taxed by annually on consumption. While they try to tax us, half the cities in this dump are drowning in debt. They shorten our day cycles, implement rations on food and water where they can get away with it. Nothing helps. Anyway, this breaks down everything for you. She handed me a display, and I looked it over, expression grim. Setting aside the issues with the dome's climate, air quality is also less of a priority than I expected. Nothing here is a priority for the government. We're lucky we have air at all. I handed the display back to her with a sigh. <sighs> the situation here was worse than I thought. Maybe I'd felt optimistic because people were living, almost happily, it seemed. But that turned out to not mean much. One rooftop garden wouldn't change anything. And that was if we could get it going. We'd been interrupted while up on the roof, and now Kesa and Jack had run off somewhere. Kesa was needed elsewhere. I had a feeling that was a common occurrence when he was here. That left me to work out some details with other people. To be honest, a lot of the residents here were lacking any kind of formal training for, well, anything. Celeste was the closest thing to a proper scientist in the court, or this part of it anyway, and all her learning came from self-study. She was more focused in medicine as well. There was also Rory, who was with us, Rory. Finally, you're not running away, can we talk? He was quiet. And it would be a lie to say things weren't a little awkward. Rory! But I was still happy to see him participating in the discussion. He seemed... better. Somewhat. There were still a lot of shadows haunting him. Or at least that's how it seemed. But still better. I'd learned he used to be a school teacher. Before. Whatever that meant. Hmm. But he at least had the basic knowledge needed to help with this project. There weren't many other people we could rely on out of the gate. Many people here had never had any formal education, and not everyone had the ability to hunt their education down the way Celeste had. Those that did were not in much better shape than anyone else. They were struggling to get by, working hard every day, and we couldn't exactly round up anyone who had useful skills. What are you thinking about so hard over there? Nothing much. Just that a lot of what we want to do will require knowledge that isn't readily available here. He speaks again. Yay, Rory, I'm so, I'm so glad to see you. Most people here haven't had time to learn any specialized skills. That may slow down the process. We're capable of learning, you know. Even without all your fancy nano enhancements. Not everyone in New Albion gets nano enhancements, Celeste. I only received one, and that... Is more than most of us get, Rory. Unless we want to go to some butcher here and hope they don't give us brain damage trying to enhance our systems. There's no need to argue. Enhancements aren't necessary. They don't make you smarter. They just help you focus so you can learn faster. It's not the lack of access to enhancements that is the issue. Humans may do without nanites for thousands of years before any of us settled on our callus. The problem is the lack of an education system in general. The lack of opportunities to learn is the biggest hurdle. How many kids here aren't even in school right now? Most of them. If they're old enough to work, they're doing that. The younger ones, I've been teaching since I... Aw, oh, good boy, Rory. Rory! It's a good distraction. But it's not easy with limited resources. Are you going to have time to help manage the garden if you're also teaching right now? I'll get the kids to help. It'll be a good learning experience for them. Even in New Albion, there were those trying to pioneer new teaching systems that relied more on hands-on experiences than lessons and exams. This environment is much more conducive to that style of teaching. It's challenging, but we will make it work. I'm glad to hear that. 
A proper school and education system would go a long way to helping with the skill shortage, at least in the future. But then there was the fact that the environment had be conducive to allowing people to go to school in the first place. It would be great if there was a library here. There was, of course, the net. You could find just about any information you could dream of there, but that didn't mean it was free to access it. A library? You have a lot of big ideas, don't you? Wouldn't a library have helped you too, Celeste? When you were learning? Look, you can add a hundred projects to your list if you want. The people here are just trying to get by. Who has time to casually stop by a library? We're trying to make it easier to get by. Not even just that. We're trying to make it so survival isn't the top priority. That takes thinking bigger than just day to day. Changes like this are a ripple effect, not a tidal wave. I can't imagine growing up in a place that encourages that level of optimism. I can't imagine growing up in one that stifles it. Sometimes optimism and hope also help you get from day to day. Celeste studied us in silence a moment, her expression unreadable. Then she laughed. It was a soft, almost sad sound, trying to puff itself up with false bravado. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess that, at any rate, it'll be interesting to see you try to make all this work. I'm sure it'll be even more interesting to see it succeed. I'm not in the habit of failing. I look forward to it, newbie queen. She stood and stretched, letting out a soft groan as she twisted from side to side. Uh, well, for now, that's about all we can discuss, I guess. Next steps are up to you and Kesa. I'm not sure when he'll be back. Me either. I got stuff to take care of, so I'm going down. She barely spared a nod as she left. I hope you... don't think too badly of her. I know she can be... blunt. I don't. I know I seem like a stupid optimist from the day side to a lot of these people. It's not bad to consider ways to improve life here. Though I... don't want it to become like the day side either. I was silent a moment, unsure what else to say to him. I'm... sorry. For what I did to you. I know it's not enough to just say it. Whoa! No, please, don't apologize, Rory. Please. I... I swallowed hard, remembering what happened back then. Then I hesitantly reached to take his hands and give them a very gentle squeeze. Rory! I don't know what you went through back then, but it's obvious you weren't yourself. Please, please don't feel like you have to say sorry. Or that sorry isn't enough. Or be afraid that I'm angry. At that time, I was... I just... A shadow passed over his face and he let out a trembling sigh. <sighs> Beneath my hands, his were clammy and shaking. I kept a firm grip on them. You don't have to talk about it, okay? Not until you're ready. And not until you want to. You don't owe me an explanation. But if you ever reach a point where you can talk about it, I'll always be willing to listen. I'm just... glad you got out of that building, okay? I'm glad you made it here and we can meet again. I'm sorry I couldn't help you back then. He smiled faintly. No, you did. From down in the lobby came a voice calling for Rory. He gave me a quiet smile as he stood and started down. Aw, oh, my heart. I loved that scene. I ended up following him because I had nothing else to do with Kesagon. The court was a place that truly seemed like it never rested. There were always people in and out, and there was always something going on. Somehow I found myself wrangled into helping clean up a mess left by someone else. I didn't mind. It gave me a chance to talk to some other people and see what this place was like without one of the others watching over my shoulder. 
Newbie Queen seemed like a nickname that was going to stick for a while. But it felt like maybe it was their way of welcoming me to the group. Ooh, another new background. I was kind of glad to get away from the madness when I offered to take some rubbish out to the larger garbage receptacles in the back alley behind the building. That seems unwise. <laughs> um, should you be going alone? Maybe I've just gotten so conditioned to having somebody nearby at all times <laughs> with this girl that I'm like, um, you know, there's still people looking for you. I went down the quiet staircase, looking around curiously. I'd never been to this part of the building. It was the same as everywhere else. Run down, old, an echo of a time when this place had been beautiful. Hold on. Alright, back alley. I'm sure nothing bad will happen here. I exited the nearest door to the alley where there was an overflowing receptacle for rubbish. I wasn't surprised at the mess. It would be more shocking if the city services were actually reliable. There is so much work to be done, isn't there? Basic conveniences just weren't a thing here at all. <sighs> I sighed, brushing my hands off on my pants. To be honest, I was curious about Chestershire. I'd seen so little of it. Just a run-down residen residential area with the bigger city ever looming as a backdrop. What I'd been told, of course, wasn't pleasant, but it was a place Kesa cared a lot about. And it was a place he wanted to make better. As I wandered to the end of the alley and looked out onto the tired street, I wondered if that would be possible. This place was so much bigger than one building and one community. Not just Chestershire, but the court itself. Kesa said this entire district was full of people who were associated with the court. That meant whatever we started at this building had to spread to the surrounding areas as well. That kind of mass change wasn't easy. It wasn't a few months of work. It was years of work. A lifetime. There was so much to do. Rooftop gardens and schools wouldn't save this place. Ultimately, the government would have to be built from the ground up, and Kesa knew that. Was I really ready for something like that? Change only ever comes with conflict. It was something one of my history professors had always been fond of saying. I had always imagined myself studying history, not making it. But it wasn't bad to put my efforts to something like this. Okay, we just ran, happened to run into somebody who knows our name. I'm sure this is fine. Excuse me, Morgan Leone. It wasn't until I turned around that I realized just how far from the building I'd walked. But that wasn't the first thing I noticed. It was, of course... Yo, hey, you found me here, eh? <laughs> How are you doing, Winter? How's my boy, Reuben? <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't lead to anything dangerous, right? Right. Winter Ashton. You're a hard person to catch alone these days, Morgan. What are you doing here? And where's Reuben? Well... He's not far away. I wasn't expecting to see you here today. What are the two of you doing here, Winter? Do you know how dangerous it is for you? That's strange, coming from you. We're here to take you home, of course. But why? I'm more confused by your confusion on this matter. Weren't you brought here against your will? That's what Reuben has been saying this entire time. But why does Reuben care? Like, huh? What's Reuben's dealio? Like, what, huh? What does he want? Otherwise, why would you have joined a violent criminal organization? Are we supposed to believe this engagement to the Crimson Air is legitimately what you wanted? I let out a breath. Okay, I don't have analytical, but I'm always affectionate to my boo. Kesa is not violent, and you can't assume you know everything about him from a few days of lurking around back alleys at the court. Are you seriously defending Crimson's heir right now? I know how this sounds to you, but you don't 
and can't know the full story about anything here. Including me. I'm sorry. What has happened to you in the months you've been here, Morgan? A lot. Too much. And you're wrong about something else. I wasn't dragged here against my will. I chose to come to Delphine to avoid being forced to join Endgame. Who literally grabbed me off the street and shoved me in a car against my will when they learned I was a queen rank. So please, don't talk to me about being forced to do things as if I'm not capable of rationally making my own choices. Well, Endgame isn't always in the right either. But you can't tell me Crimson is any better. Kesa is not Crimson. And he's the only one I'm aligning myself with here. You can't understand how limited the options are for an Esper like me, Detective Ashton. Go back and become a soldier for Endgame, or stay here and... Become a violent criminal. I'm not staying for Crimson. I'm staying for the court. The people here aren't violent criminals, and there is important work I can do. I know you believe... What I believe is that my situation is complicated. Miss... Detective Ashton. I know you're not here on official business. You can't think you have any sort of jurisdiction in Chestershire. I won't say we're here officially. Then why are you here? Because it was obvious you were kidnapped. You just disappeared one day. Reuben went to your flat and it was cleaned out like you never existed. Your family relocated. Records were altered in a suspicious way. And Reuben can't ignore mysteries like that. He wouldn't let it go. And I couldn't let him come here alone. I'm sorry you came all the way here, but I'm not going back with you. Do you truly believe we can let you stay here? Do you truly believe you can make me leave? His face was startled, and he looked away. An uncharacteristically dark expression on his face. Yeah, you messing with a queen now, buddy boo. When we saw you that first day, we suspected you were an Esper. If we'd known then... You'd have turned me over to Endgame? No. I don't think Reuben would have done that. He's not... He doesn't like the way they try to get their hands on everyone. Interesting. Okay, so it's not for Endgame's sake, so what then? Ruben, what are you plotting over there? We would have found a way to protect you. How? Do you have another secret group of espers running around with you guys? Are those the guys that were, like, shooting at us? In the other, like, in the beginning, like, the prologue stuff? Huh? Winter, explain yourself. Or not. <laughs> Morgan's like, I don't need to know this. I'll find out on Reuben's route. It's fine. In any case, it doesn't matter. There was so much happening that day. I was scared and confused. And I chose to come here. That is the gist of it. Morgan, that's not a choice. When you feel you don't have other options... I had other options. I could have chosen Endgame. There was a moment I could have tried to break away on my own. I just thought this choice was better in the moment. That this choice would give me more freedom. We're working on something important here, whether or not you believe it. Important? What could possibly be important here? You've been snooping around for a couple of weeks at least. You see how people live. Wouldn't you say that improving that is important? You really think that man is trying to improve things here? He's a criminal, Morgan. Everyone at the top in Delphine is a criminal. And they're also the only ones with enough power to make a difference. When one of them tries to do that, they have to fight hard to convince one part of the population they want to help, and the other part they're just as bad as everyone else. It's a tightrope I didn't understand when I first got here, either. I'm sorry. I need to head back now. I pushed my way past him, but stopped to look back. It frustrated me when I first arrived. 
but I'm starting to understand why people here get so angry about how we live on the day side. We've gotten used to closing our eyes and ignoring what happens here, or else we look just enough to make some kind of snap judgment about it being a cesspool. Neither are true. People are trying to live here, fighting to do that every single day. I understand your concern for the people here, but what about your parents? Are you concerned about them? Have you even talked to them? Do they know where you are? Kesa has been in contact with them. Have you talked to them, Morgan? You shouldn't just believe him. He said he relocated them, and that part was true. But you're right. I need to contact them personally. And I'll be doing that soon. That, at least... Hey... Morgan! What are you doing out here? Oh, great. Detective... You should leave. I'm sorry I won't go back with you. Tell Reuben I'm grateful he took the time to try to find me. But I'm fine here. I turned from him and hurried to Kesa, who looked upset. Morgan! Wait! Jack, deal with him. Jack went past us quickly, and as soon as I was in reach, Kesa took me by the upper arm and ushered me back to the alley. Did he hurt you? Of course he... Why did you leave Cordus? I told you it was dangerous here! I was taking some rubbish... What did that man want? He was trying to find out... What would you have done if someone tried to hurt you? It isn't safe, and you... It would be incredibly helpful if you let me finish! I came close to shouting the words at him as I yanked my arm away, glaring. And I don't appreciate being pulled around like this. I don't appreciate that you ignored my... Order? Suggestion. We try to ensure everyone's safety here, but there are still some people... No one here can make me do anything I don't want to do. I really need everyone to understand that. You're not all-powerful, Morgan. None of us is. And you're still... I flicked my hand out to the large garbage receptacle. In an instant, my sigh wove a net around it, and flung it to the other side of the alley while I never broke eye contact. Damn! <laughs> Girl gave a show of power! It landed with a dull thud that vibrated through the ground and scattered garbage everywhere as it skidded to a halt. I said I can take care of myself, Kesa. Maybe all this time you thought you were training a weapon, but that's not what was happening. Kesa let out a trembling breath, squeezing his eyes shut and letting out a sigh. <sighs> a split second later and he was pulling me into a hug, holding me with surprising desperation. I apologize for reacting that way. I never thought I was training a weapon. Never. I only ever wanted you to be able to protect yourself. I know you are capable. He pulled away, giving me a very serious look. Though, it's also not in your character to harm others. I just... can't allow anything to happen to you. I can't lose you. When you weren't anywhere in the building, I panicked. Please don't be so reckless. Don't wander alone here. My frustration evaporated at the broken desperation in his voice, and I hugged him back. I know. I didn't mean to wander so far. And Winter didn't harm me. We just talked. You could have simply sent me a message. I... Didn't think about it? I did say I panicked. I located you with my sphere and just ran to you. Did he offer to take you back? I reacted before I thought about what you might be discussing. I declined. Are you... Sure. We can still call him but. I reached up to touch his cheek. Kesa covered my hand with his, shutting his eyes. I'm sorry. Wow. I was wondering what that noise was. You are becoming a proper criminal, Morgan. Littering and everything. 
truly the most notorious member of Crimson. Shut, Shut up, up Jack. Jack. A true criminal, the beginning of a life of crime. <laughs> Littering. Why are we getting all these hilarious um, achievements on cases? Root. I'm I'm all about it, but <laughs> crime. That said. I did write the garbage receptacle and pick up everything that had scattered, thanking the heaven's telekinesis made the work much easier. Jack spent most of the time laughing, between both him and Kesa lecturing me on the dangers of Chestershire. What did he say when you approached him? Nothing much. He left right away, and I didn't know if he wanted me to chase him down or not. From what Morgan has said, there is no reason to bother. They'll go home once they've lost interest. He gave me a narrow-eyed look as I finally finished with my cleanup of the alley. It's quite suspicious a man you don't know is this determined to track you down. He's not an ex-boyfriend if that's what you're implying. Like, I don't know what this guy's deal is. Detective Ashton made it seem like it was a matter of principle. They noticed something was off and just couldn't leave it alone. He did say they were here unofficially. This is why I hate law enforcement. Isn't that because of the whole criminal record thing? He pulled me into a tight embrace, resting his chin against my head. Hmm. <laughs> He's totally pouting. If you two lovebirds are finished having your moment... Morgan, I believe you missed a bit of trash when you were cleaning up. Oh, you're right. Come here, Jack. Very funny, Kesa. As the three of us went back inside, I glanced back to the alley entrance. One thing Winter was right about was that I needed to talk to Kesa about being able to contact my parents. It had been far too long. Safety or not, it was something I needed to fix. It had been a long day. When we finally left the court, the already dim light was growing darker. I expected to be heading back to Pythia. We were clearly not driving that direction, though. So... where are we going? There is something I wanted to show you, but it's on the outskirts of Chestershire where no one lives. Ah, the Mafia heir is taking me to an abandoned district where no one lives. Definitely no cause for alarm. Kesa took my hand and brought it to his lips with a slight smirk. <laughs> that heir is also your fiancé. Surely you have nothing to fear. I don't know. My fiancé can be a little terrifying if the situation calls for it. This situation does not call for it, I assure you. So you won't tell me where we're going? You'll see soon enough. But I suspect you're going to enjoy it. I wasn't sure what there could be to enjoy in an abandoned district at the edge of a struggling city, but he seemed far too pleased with himself for me to have many doubts. I'm gonna call. That what he's probably doing is... There was something about stars was in the title for this... Uh, for this chapter. And they had talked early on about her getting to see the stars here, so maybe... He's taking her that far, so there's like as little light pollution as possible, and she can see all the stars. That's what I'm hoping for. Ooh, stars! Where are we going, Kesa? Because I actually am starting to be concerned about... I stopped when I stepped out of the dark, narrow door and onto the empty rooftop. It wasn't all that dissimilar from the one at the court. It is pretty similar. Another project location, maybe? Kesa, what are we doing here? Kesa took my hands and pulled me to him with a soft smile. Look up. What's that going to? Wow! Look at all those stars! Also, that was so Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Instead of closing her eyes, though, but uh, pulling her hands towards him and like, Hey, look around! I got this for you! <laughs> it's the stars! Adorable. Every thought evaporated when I stared up at the dark expanse overhead. I hadn't even taken notice of it before. The thin bubble of the city's dome wasn't visible against the endless sea above. It was just stars. Endless. Fathomless. 
and almost devastating in their beauty. That was the moment I knew why people had romanticized the night sky for millennia. On Earth, on Arcalis, surely on every world. I'd seen pictures, of course, and a few faint sparkles from my room at the mansion, or through the greenhouse roof, but it wasn't the same. Night in Pythia had always seemed sort of empty and cold, but the sky stretching above us was anything but empty. What do you think? It's so... beautiful. It is. I told you I'd show it to you. Well, you can see even more stars as you get further from the city lights, but it's still a nice view from here. It is. He tucked me to a blanket spread on the roof and pulled me down. Amazing. We laid back together, my head resting on his arm and just stared overhead. Wow. Look at this guy's luscious hair. It's so not fair. <laughs> I'm jealous of his hair. He released a soft sigh as he caught a lock of my hair, twisting it around his fingers. <sighs> Sometimes I regret that I cannot give you the sun. Like that detective could if he took you home. I don't. So I hope you'll be content if I give you millions of them instead. Aww. <laughs> I laughed and laid my head on his shoulder again. What girl could say no to millions of sons? Surely not one with your intelligence and common sense. Surely. Though, I'm not sure what the rest of the planet is going to think if they find out all the stars now belong to me. Kesa chuckled, lacing his fingers through mine. <laughs> we won't tell them. We lay there a long time. Kesa pointed out Dion and several other objects I never imagined seeing with my own eyes. New Terra passed overhead as well, on its endless circle around the planet. It was such a wonderful evening. I didn't want it to end. Our first real date! And, of course, he elected something stupidly romantic and beautiful. Ugh. But, sadly, we couldn't stay there all night. Setting aside the whole bit where night lasted forever, there was also the fact that we were due back at the mansion. Well, and Kesa complained about me cutting off the circulation in his arm. <laughs> Amazing. And said the rooftop was even less comfortable than my bed. He was such a dork sometimes. But even he seemed reluctant to leave. It took a long time before either of us moved. Every time he said we should, the conversation changed course and we continued to talk a while longer. I finally sat up first, generously allowing some blood flow back into his arm. He said next time he was bringing many pillows. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Kesa stood first, offering me a hand to pull myself up as well. Okay. Well, I guess things were going too well. It hit me as soon as I got to my feet, with enough force to send me straight back to my knees. The world went reeling away from me as a tidal wave of sounds crashed in. Sounds that weren't from here. An explosion. Gunfire. Screaming and shouts. Running footsteps. The smell of smoke filled my nostrils and clogged my throat. I coughed against it even though I could taste the night air of Chestershire and knew none of this was real. Karis? So they come after all. The thought that came to me was strange. Foreign. And not my own, though it was in a voice I recognized. From somewhere that felt far away, even though it was right next to me, someone was calling. Case's voice was frantic, desperation tinged. I tried to focus on it and answer, but could not. Morgan! He shook me once, and the details of his face sharpened. I was back on the rooftop, coughing and gagging on smoke that wasn't real. Morgan! What happened? I don't... I don't know. Oh, is she having like a premonition of what's about to happen? He pulled me close, stroking my hair for a few moments before he moved away, watching me with concern. Yeah. Some sort of precog experience, perhaps. You've experienced one before, correct? This was way more powerful than her last one. Any, any mind or sight-based psi ability. 
This includes precognition, the ability to see the future, postcognition, the ability to see into past events, psychometry, clairvoyance, and all similar abilities. I think we did actually read about the kinetic. Um, let's just reread it now, because I, I can't remember all the specifics. Bishops tend to specialize in theokinetic skills, most notably precognition. Theokinetic abilities are some of the most mentally taxing abilities and can often result in dangerous mind bursts and psi fatigue. But beyond that, there are other mental traumas associated with seeing future and past events. Many theokinetic specialists are under extreme mental burden with the things they see and trying to pick out a correct path among the information. The emotional strain is significant, and it's not uncommon for these specialists in Endgame to retire early or move into other divisions to preserve their own mental health. I don't know. This was different. Stronger. It was a jumble. And none of the others felt like that. Kesa helped me carefully to my feet. My legs were shaky and weak, but I stood. We'll get you to the car for now. You can tell me about it on our way back. The door to the rooftop flew open and Jack burst out, out of breath and ashen-faced. Kesa! Word from the mansion. There's been an attack. Man, it, she basically got the precognition like two seconds before it happened. Everything's gone completely to hell. My stomach dropped with sudden realization. The voice I heard in that vision had been Karis. <laughs>